Hello YouTube, my name is Katie Laramore and I'm participating in the Women in Body um, online program with the issue. And today I thought that I would take the opportunity to talk about gender and um, how it's socially constructed and how it becomes a part of our society and how we recognize it and don't recognize it and don't understand it um, in different ways. I thought one as I'm trying to understand this class and grasp the the different concepts that are going on, um, I wanted to try to explain this as easily to somebody else since I've tried to try to, since I myself am trying to figure out everything that is being taught in this class and trying to um, break it down so that it's understandable. And I was talking to a coworker about the anxiety of doing this, <laughs> um, this video and she's like, well, what was it about? And I was like, well, I'm going to try to talk about gender. And she's like, well, well, what do you mean? And I, and I said, well, you know, how do we become gendered? Such as the article by, um, Karen Martin becoming a gendered body and, um, and how it just starts at such a young age for, for children and how, you know, like I, like I was explaining to her, when a baby comes out and we identify it as male or female based on the exterior um, genitalia, then we start, you know, you know, talking to it. If it's a little girl, we'll talk really sweet and kind and, you know, um, and if it's a little boy, we might, you know, use kind of more gruffer voices. And then as that child grows, you know, we put specific colors on them and we introduce them to specific toys and um, they become male, female, masculine, feminine based on that. And I kind of was, I kind of asked her, I said, you know, if, if, if you came out and nobody specified what you were and they just kind of let you develop, I said, what would your body become? And she goes, that's just such an interesting question. So I can, um, as a mom of both um, a male and a female child, I, I find it interesting. I was just reflecting back on those early moments when they were born. Um, I remember calling my son my little man and um, not not my little boy, but my little man. And I guess that to me meant that he was going to grow up to be big and a provider and, you know, caring. And then my daughter was just my little girl. And um, sometimes as a 35-year-old woman, I still call myself a girl, um, which, you know, suggests daintiness and tiny and something that needs to be cared for. Um, so I, I kind of find that interesting as I as I look back on those, you know, first moments of my children and how I how I thought about them. Um, and even growing up, as they continue to grow, they're now 12 and 15. Um, you know, it's it's very interesting, the expectations that I have upon them, like, you know, I expect, you know, Shelby to be kind and quiet and, you know, not not rough. <laughs> and then I expect the very opposite of Tanner, you know, care for your sister, um, protect her, um, and that kind of stuff. So I just, I just find it very, very interesting how I parent my children just kind of, um, innately kind of, I mean, that's a wrong word. It just happens. I don't, I don't intentionally think about whether or not they, you know, should be, you know, more feminine or masculine. It just, it just happens in the way that I talk to them and teach them and go about things. And it's not out of disrespect for anybody or any one thing. So, um, <clears throat> I find that interesting. I also, um, have a really, really great friend of mine who is gay and we were at the bar the other day and we were talking and he admitted that he sometimes feels you know, um, I don't know if maybe saddened was the, I mean, I felt kind of, I got the sadness from him because he says at times he feels confused. He definitely identifies as male. Um, but 
sometimes feels more a little bit on the more feminine side of things. He's not very like flamboyant or outgoing, but we live in Bozeman, Montana. And if you think about that, you think of men that are very rugged. We got, they got beards and they're big men. And, um, and you know, he has that beard. So he's trying to fit in at the same time, but at the same time, he's more feminine, which I want to say sensitive, uh, which sounds ridiculous and I feel I feel bad that we're that we're stuck in this binary which is um you know you're either this or you're that and who's in the middle and who are these people and what are these people and are they right or are they wrong um and I guess that makes me sad and confused that I don't understand it more not for a lack of wanting to um just never considered it before and I guess that just that makes me sad for me, makes me sad um, that there's people out there that, you know, feel that they're not considered or thought about um, with simple things like um, the Czech male, female, and now I'm noticing, you know, other. And so that just uh, makes me sad that there's other. I actually am kind of proud. Um, I am a homeless case manager for our community and I help with housing um, for the homeless and um, we have a lot of HUD funding and we have to fill out applications and I've recently have taken notice that you can actually check different um, things male female um, transgender male transgender female you can you can kind of be more specific in what you would like other you can also say other you can also say prefer not to say um so that's nice so there are some head forms and then there's others that's not just male female um you don't even get another option so that's interesting it's what i appreciate it about this class and what i'm trying to learn is that i'm becoming more aware and i guess if anything that's that's what i hope that I can pass on to my children is just this awareness of, of gender and sensitivity and what does that mean. Um, in the Karen Martin piece, I was really drawn to that piece mostly because it was based around children and I'm a mom and that was very relatable to me to think about children and how we grow up and how we treat them and how the uh, children in the classroom were treated different. Girls were asked to be quiet and they were dainty and boys were spread out and they were loud and they played with big toys um, so I just found that really interesting and I just thought it was interesting what made men and women um, based on looks you know women dress cute and pretty and makeup and hair and um, here I am fussing with my own hair because I'm worried about looking pretty um, and then there's boys who, you know, don't have to worry about those things. And that's just, that's interesting. Just all really very interesting. Um, and so I've been also thinking about how our bodies made either male or female. How, how are we gendered? And it's gendered through movement. Like I said before, boys are um, rough and tumbling and fighting's okay and um women are supposed to be quiet and dainty um i find it interesting i file some mma type stuff and i'm really excited to see the females um come out and show that they're strong and big um with their movements and and you know can really get down and rough but then they're also beautiful like their pictures are beautiful um, Rhonda Rousey, for example, poses beautifully and she's fantastic, but yet she's rough like a boy. I don't know. I think it's fantastic. Um, and so clothing again, um, jobs in sports, um, this, you know, are, there's more gendered, you know, nurses are usually ran, are more gendered and, you know, um, executives are more male gendered. Um, and so I find that very interesting. Um, body parts and social institutions, um, you know, also 
identify and um, specify gender. And so I just think it's all just really interesting how gender comes about and how we are male and female and how there's these in-between people who just, um, who maybe feel like they don't fit in or have to try to pass one way or the other. And I think um, it's unfortunate and um, I'm trying my best to learn and become more um, aware um, of others, especially even as I work with the public, like I do, um, I run ac um, across more men than women, which I also find is very interesting. If I'm looking at what I do, I definitely service more men who are homeless than women, which I find very interesting. Um, I wonder how that works out. Why is that? Why are there more homeless men than homeless women? And how does that play into it? So every time I think about this, I'm asking myself more questions um, that make me think and make me be more self-aware in what, um, how we become gendered. So thank you for listening. I don't know if, I hope that, you know, I've raised additional questions for other people. And have a great night.